of Elo. I'll just read it. Okay, let's go. Mirosh Chodesh Elo until after Yom Kippur. These are days of Ratzon. This is the Kitzur Shulchan Aruch, by the way. You can <clears throat> buy it. You want to want to tell me? How, uh, I'll tell you how to download it. Here, one second. I'll tell you how to download it. Here we go. One minute. One moment. I don't know if I can do this. Here. Here. Put this in the thing. Copy. Now back to the. Uh, are you? Are, do you see this here? Do you see this? What? I, yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Let me let me just show. Send you this in the chat. See what? What the link? Yeah. The, Not yet. Can this be right? No, no, no. Something's wrong here. Something is wrong. One second. One second. Oh, what is this? Okay. Look, I, I want to send you the link. Here. Excuse me. Here it is. Copy. Right? And now I should be able to send this to you. Shit. Now, it's the same thing. Okay. I hope this works. Get to show All right, let's leave this. Let's go back to the share screen. And there it is. All right, all right, my friends, here we go. <clears throat> From Rosh Chodesh Elul until after Yom Kippur, these are days of God's goodwill. Even though the all year, Afki Bekal Shana, even though the rest of the year Even though the rest of the year, God, Mikhail Tshuva, he accepts people's doing repenting. <clears throat> Those people who return to him with a, a, a complete heart. Nevertheless, these days, Muvcharim Yoter, these days are really special. Which days? From Rosh Chodesh Elul until Yom Kippur. 40 days. Umuzamani, umizumanim lechuva. And they are ready, God is ready and accepts people who return to him. Why? Because these 40 days are days of mercy and days of God's goodwill. What's so special about these days? Because on Rosh Chodesh Elul, Moshe went up on Mount Sinai to receive the second tablets. Right? The first tablets Moshe went up on the holiday of Shavuot. He came down 40 days later and broke them. Yud Zion Tammuz. He went up a second time from Yud Zion Tammuz to the Yud Ches Tammuz. And he stayed until Rosh Chodesh Elul. And he came, went back up on Rosh Chodesh Elul for 40 days. And he waited there for 40 days. And he came down on the 10th day of Tishrei. Which, what is the 10th day of Tishrei? Yom Kippur. Shaya Az, Gomer Kapora, then that finished the forgiveness for the Jewish people. Umin Az, since then, that Moshe Rabbeinu went up on Mount Sinai, on those 40 days, these days have been sanctified, singled out for days of God's goodwill. The Yom Asiri B'Tishrei, and the 10th day of Tishrei is Yom Kippur. <clears throat> the custom is more, in most places. To fast, we don't do it. Fast. He brings a lot of customs down here. This is Rev Shlomo Gansfried. He was a big rabbi in um, Hungary. This is, I guess, like a hundred years ago. I don't. I have to check to see when it was. But in any case, he was a very big rabbi, and he has a lot of customs that were known. A lot. They're not always customs of the Sephardic Jews. And a lot of they're not accustomed of, of Chabad, <clears throat> but nevertheless they are. 
<clears throat> genuine uh, proper customs. <clears throat> so before you do it, you have to ask your rabbi if that's a custom of your congregation or not. But if you do do the customs that he says, you won't go wrong. You won't go wrong. Worst is, is it's not your, your you know, the, maybe Ashkenazim don't do it or the you know, Jews from Portugal don't do it, whatever group you're in, doesn't do it for their customs, and they're all for one purpose, to serve God better. Okay, so some people do what they call fasting before Yom Kippur, before Rosh Chodesh Elul, and they do what's called Yom Kippur Katan. There's, there are these prayers that say that we, in Chabad we don't do it, in order that the heart will be ready for to, to do tshuva. If Rosh Chodesh falls on Shabbat, Okay, then when do they make the fast? A different time. A Rabbi Adonain or Yitzhak Luria, the Arizal, <clears throat> blessed memory, he writes like this. The month of Elo, Asher lo tzadav elokim inad liyado, inu liyado, says if someone killed someone else and he didn't do it intentionally, lo tzadav, he didn't hunt for the person. And Hashem just happened, Ina just made it happen by accident to come into his hand. And you killed someone, Samtilacha. I have made for you a city of refuge. That's the first letters, Ana. It says, um, Ina, Liyado, Aleph, Lamed, Vesamti, Lach. These are the first of Elo. Saying that this month is a time, a special time to do tshuva on your sins. It's a city of refuge. And also, it's a hint at. Shagam Allah Shagagos, that even on the, now you, sometimes this thing about the city of refuge is used for learning Torah, because Torah is a city of refuge. But he's writing what he's writing. That's what he says that when it comes from the Arizal. Also, and it also tells you that even if you did accidental sins, Shagaga, Shogeg, you did sins in ignorance, you also have to repent on this month. Right? Now again, we can't stress it enough. But repentance, there's two parts of repentance. One part of repentance is that you regret doing bad. But the main part of repentance is, is that why you regret doing bad? Because you should have been doing good. And you make a resolution that in the future I'm going to do good. There's also what we call repentance from fear, repentance from love. A person repents because he all of a sudden realizes, hey, I'm not the king of the universe. God is the king of the universe. And if I don't do something quick, you know, he, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get punished. That's called doing repentance from fear. There's also repentance from love, which is much deeper. God is so good. He gives me everything. And I sinned against him. And he's going to forgive me for sure. But how could, I, God is so good and he'll even forgive me. How could I have gone against him? Oh, I feel so bad. I feel so embarrassed. Right? That's more tshuva from love, or a deeper type of fear. Okay, that's also, some people say, that's one of Elul. Elul is in, it's a city of refuge, that's showing on tshuva. Also, it says, there's different, you should know different uh, interpretations of all these, but they all go on Elul. And God will circumcise at lavavacha v'et lavav. Zarecha, God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring. This is the first table of Elul. <clears throat> circumcise. That's usually, this is usually referred to as doing tshuva. And the previous one about the Ari Miklat is referred to as learning Torah. In any case, it's not. The Cain also, Ani Ladodi Vadodi Li. In Song of Songs, I am to my beloved, my beloved is me. Also the first letter is O. And also, Ish Eyu Matanot Levionim. This it comes from the Megillah. A person should give to his friend, the person should give to his friend, says, Ish uh, uh, Eyu. A person should give gifts to his friend and give charity to the poor. This is the first letters, Aleph, Lamed, Vav, Lamed. Also, Rosh Tevis Elo. This ends at three things, namely tshuva, prayer, and charity. That you have to do these three things, giving charity, you should give gifts to your friends and to the poor, 
that's giving charity. Ani letori letori li, that's prayer. When you pray to Hashem, Hashem answers you. You have to do these three things <coughs> in this month. <coughs> and the Rebbe adds on also learning to him. You add these three things are very important in this month. Mal Hashem, that's what it says, God circumcises your heart, that's talking about tshuva. I am I to be loved, that's talking about prayer. That this is Rina Dodin, this is love songs, prayer. By the way, I, I want to stress again the importance of translating every word when you pray. And then you, the prayers in the morning can be the best time of the day. The best time of the day. You're talking to God, you're praising God, you're thinking about God, you're thinking only positive things. Only positive things. Most positive situation you can possibly be in. This is Rina Dodim, love songs. And then the last one, it says, Ish the Reo, Matanat Le'avyani, and this is talking about giving charity. It's also a custom to sound the shofar on this month. They begin on the second day of Rosh Chodesh. And they sound the shofar every day after the prayers of Tefillah. Tekiah, Tua, Tekiah. In the Chabad, we do it like I showed you in the morning. But the day before, in order that you should make us um, a difference between these sounding of the shofar, which is optional, and the sounding of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, which is a commandment, It says, Erev Rosh Chodesh, we don't sound the shofar. In order to make a difference between the sounding of the shofar that we do in Elul and the mitzvah of sounding the shofar, which is on Rosh Hashanah. The reason for this is in order to arouse the people to do tshuva. Because this is the nature of a shofar. A shofar arouses a person to be a little bit afraid. Like it says, a katu. If you sound the shofar in the city, can it be that people won't be afraid? Also, some people say that until from Rosh Chodesh Elul until Shemini Atzeres, they say in the morning and the evening, we say in the afternoon, the prayer, uh, uh, Psalm number 27. David Hashem Ori Ve'yishi. Psalm number 27. Vahu Alpia Midrash says, Hashem Ori, Yishi, God is my light, that's Rosh Hashanah. Yishi, he, salva- he saves me, is my, my salvation, that's Yom Kippur. That he will make me sit in his sukkah, in his covering, that's Sukkot. Also, we say in Tehillim, <clears throat> people say Tehillim in the congregation in every place. In Chabad, we say every day. From the time that Elo comes in until Yom Kippur, when a person writes a letter to his friend, and I've forgotten to do this really, you should write, or in the beginning or the end, that a blessing you for a new year, you should be judged favorably, a good, sweet year. Anshe Maisa, serious people, check on this month their tefillin and their mezuzahs. <clears throat> And any other mitzvahs that you have, your your uh, your talis, your where you give your charity to. In any case, you should check on this month. This is a month of checking. Okay, now we're talking about the seven half Torahs from Tisha B'av, The seven half Torahs, and I don't want to go through all of these seven half Torahs that we read, the Shevan and the Chamta. Right? We talk about that usually at the end of the week. The first day that's before Rosh Hashanah, Yom Rishon, the first Sunday before Rosh Hashanah, this is going to be not, this is going to be this Motzi Shabbos. We're going to start saying Slichot. Mashkim in the Slichot. They wouldn't wake up early in the morning. Now the Sephardic Jews, they've already been saying Slichot for a whole month. They start from, like you hear, from Rosh Chodesh Elu. They're already saying. They said the whole first 30 months. And a lot of congregations also, they say, I mean, it could be all of them. They say between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, also they say Slichot. Chabad does not. Chabad, we say Slichot only the week preceding, if it's if it's big enough, the week. Um, and if not, then we say we start from the week before. But the week preceding Yom Kippur. And that's it. We don't say from Rosh Chodesh Elul, and we don't say between Rosh Hashanah. Did I say Yom Kippur? I'm sorry. 
with the week preceding Rosh Hashanah, we say Slichos, and we don't say between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. So in other words, this Motzi Shabbos, Shabbos will go out, and then at midnight, everyone goes to Shul, I hope, and says Slichos. Everyone goes to Shul, and they say Slichos. Or you go to say in the minion now these days this 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 corona panic, so people are saying they make minions in front of their houses. I hope that's the same thing you're doing. Anyway, you, oh, you go to show. But anyways, midnight Mozi Shabbos, you start saying slichot. Skip the line. We have slichos. If it's and okay, <clears throat> it says if the first day of uh, if if Rosh Hashanah will be on Monday or Tuesday, then we re begin. We add on another week. We start a whole week earlier. Okay, when you what? Wait, if let's say if you go to sleep after Shabbos. And you want to wake up at midnight, so you have to wash your hands and bless Al Natila Shadayim. And Chabad usually they make a big for bringing before saying Slichos. Actually, <clears throat> Achzir, where it says Slichos, he should wrap himself in a talis and etc. Okay, should he make a blessing or not? We won't go into this. Not for us. <clears throat> a person, the Shliach Tzibur, you should try to make the Shliach Tzibur a person who knows how to learn Torah, who has good deeds, got a good reputation, as much as is possible to find. Also the same thing, the one who is sounding the shofar, the one who is sounding the shofar, it should be a person, if possible, that he's married, and he knows what life is all about. And, um, but nevertheless, all Jews are okay to sound the shofar. But what about a person who is in mourning? Mourning, if you know anyone who is, their mother or father has passed away, this law is for them and we're not gonna read it. Also this law. What about a person saying slichos in his home, alone? He should not say the 13 attributes of mercy, but he can say it with the melody that he reads in the Torah. Hashem, Hashem, And also when it mentions the 13 attributes of mercy, he should skip over that. And also all the requests and prayers that are said in Aramaic, like Mache or Mase, God makes sick and gave, he, he heals, and Maron di Bishamaya, our master in heaven, don't say them, only if you have 10 people. All right, this is again, laws of, of Avelos, of people who are in mourning. Okay, he says an interesting thing, the person who is going to be the cantor on Rosh Hashanah, and also the person who sounds the shofar, it's a good idea to separate yourself three days before Rosh Hashanah from anything that might bring him to not nice thoughts. He should learn as much as he can the meaning of the prayers. He should learn also the laws of sounding the shofar. And he should also learn books of Musar or Hasidut that arouse a person's heart. He should come to fear God and be humble, humble himself, because God is judging the whole world. If they can't find a person who is a, who sounds the chauffeur, then it at least should be a person that he knows something, how to read this, something, that he, and he should know the laws of the chauffeur, because if not, it could be that he'll make a mistake and no one will know about it. Some people fast in the 10 days of Chu, but we don't do that. Okay, some people go to graveyards.
Some people go to the graveyards before Beis Kavoros and the places where there are tzaddikim and pray to the tzaddikim because the places where the tzaddikim are found, it's, it's a holier place and the prayers are accepted more by Hashem. There's different explanations. There's a book called Sefer Ishtathut by the second Rebbe of Chabad and he explains different aspects and reasons for going to pray at the graves of tzaddikim. <clears throat> and one of them is this, that the, the place where tzaddik is buried, that place becomes like a holy place. It's more sensitive to godliness. And the prayers are answered better. Okay. Another reason is that the tzaddikim, they never really die. And when we go and pray to Hashem, it arouses the tzaddikim to also help us in our prayers. Just like we would go to a living person and say, please pray for me. You see it all the time, advertisements. Please pray for such and such a person. Please pray for such and such. Well, those prayers work. And if you go to a really holy person that his whole life is just devoted <clears throat> to thinking about and talking about and doing for Hashem, as those prayers are even better. <clears throat> The more genuine is a person's connection. And the tzaddikim, these dead, the people are, the tzaddikim that are dead, their souls are still alive. And they still have some connection to the grave where they're buried. So when we go and pray, is the tzaddikim also intervene, they help us pray. We don't pray to the tzaddikim, though. But you, you can ask as a, as a favor, just like you ask a person, help me and pray. Also, because this is a the place of, that's holy, it's a holy place, right? The tefillah is re accepted. <clears throat> Kodesh. And you should know there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people that they say that, you know, it's forbidden to go to the graves of Tzaddikim and it's the most, it's a big, it's, it's against Judaism, it's forbidden. Right? The people that are going to Rabbi Nachman, it's, a, they're, 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 it's, a, it's against the, the Torah. It's not so. It's definitely not so. Definitely is not so. And here we see it's a halacha. It says the grave. And if you look at the Arizal, <clears throat> You see that it's not so. Here we have in Israel, we have the, the graves of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. Now, is, isn't the problem when you go to the graves of what you do there? I mean, Caleb went to the, you know, to the patriarchs, but right. there's a big problem of going to the graves and, you know, praying to the tzaddiks as though they're, they're doing it for you, as though they're gods yeah. of some kind. Yeah, I don't know if and there is. Slippery, it's a, it's, it's a big problem. I don't know if it's a big problem. I don't know. I don't really know if it's a problem at all. I don't think that there's anybody who really thinks that, you know, uh, one of these tzaddikim, they answer the prayers. But on the other hand, if a person can go to a doctor and ask a doctor, you know, please help me and save me, and only Hashem is really doing the saving. And we see there's big tzaddikim, big Talmud chachamim, and big, you know, they, they go to doctors, you know, and they ask the doctor to help you. So if you can ask a doctor to help you, how much more so you can ask a tzaddik to help you? What's the question? You know, you ask the tzaddik. Mm -hmm. But you're right. If a person totally takes God out of the picture, totally takes God out of the picture, then that's a problem. But it's also the same problem with that with a doctor also. Say also the same problem. Right? When you go to a doctor, you should know that it's a sham gives you permission to go to the doctor deal. The same thing, Sadiqim, they God gave them permission that they could pray for the Jewish people. We saw in the Torah. And when the, the Jews were getting getting bitten by the Nahashim, it says that they all went to Moshe and they said, Moshe, help. Right? When the Jews were, they didn't have what to drink. So they went to Moshe and Moshe took a stick and he threw it in and he made the water sweet. You know, there's the tzaddikim, they have power. And not only do they have power, that is their only purpose, is to help Jews. Moshe's whole thing was to take the Jews out of Egypt and give them the Torah. That's their whole thing, is just to help Jews. So to go to a grave of a tzaddik, it's well, well, the, the, There is a slight difference between going to a doctor and going to a tzaddik's grave. Um, this, the, the doctor is definitely alive in this world, and the tzaddik, whether he, we say he's, he, he never dies, but is he alive in this world? So it's it's a doctor, problem for some people, I think. Of course it's a problem. Judaism is a problem. If you, if you read, and I mean, what people can't see, let's put it in a, in a better way. Honesty is a problem. 
You can't see honesty. So honesty is a problem, right? Faithfulness is a problem. It, it, uh, how do you say uh, the, the not being lazy is a problem? You see the bed; it's so nice. It's values, genuine values. It's a problem. Things that are spiritual that are more problem. All these the Greek philosophers talked about this stuff, but it's a fact. You know what I'm saying? You have these coaching and things like that. People, it's very hard for people to be brave, people to do, to do spiritual things. The, the, the tzaddikim, they are more in the world than the doctors are in the world. Tzaddikim are, if you read in the Tanya, it says a tzaddik, when he passes away, he's more in the world than he was before. Why? Because the whole essence of what a tzaddik is, is to help Jews spiritually. And the gashmis, the physicality of the Jews, that's spiritual. A person has a, a, a toothache, he can't serve God. A person is poor, you know, he's, and he can't get over it, the, the poverty, so he's not going to be able to serve God. He's going to be miserable, get depressed. So the tzaddikim, Torah, mitzvahs, Hashem, they're more real, they're more physical in this physical world than the things that we see, doctors and lawyers and money and, and bank accounts. You know, that's the real reality in the physical world. But you're right, people have trouble with it, no doubt about it. I also have trouble with it. I also, uh, so what's the question? Oh. You know, I'm talking about it day and night, and for sure, what you see in front of your eyes, that's what's real. That's what's real. But the fact is, the Jews are here to show that what we don't see is more real. The goodness of Hashem, the kindness of Hashem, the love of Hashem, the power of Hashem, the beauty of Hashem, the awesomeness of Hashem, those things are more real. That, that's the creator. He's more real than the creation. But on the other hand, he wants the creation to be here. It's here because he's creating it. So that, that, that's why going to Tzaddikim, these people are people that they, their whole existence is just to help Jews. Even non-Jews. They say when the Ben Ishchai used to walk through the streets, like that, that all the, the non-Jews, the Arabs, they used to close their stores and stand out in front. You know, they just, because they knew he was there for their benefit. That's crazy. Okay, a person that has, anyway, you're going to graves. That's a good point, very good point. Um, okay, anyway, there's this prayer that he says. Let's just see how much we can finish. We just finished. Era of Rosh Hashanah, the custom is people fast until after Mincha. We don't do that necessarily. And then you can taste a little something. So you shouldn't go into you know, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah when you are uh, in pain, fasting. If you do Torah, Mitzvahs, and Shuva on Rosh Hashanah, you, we do not do Tachanun. We do not request forgiveness for Hashem. That's Yom Kippur. <clears throat> A person should uh, have clean clothes, take a haircut, clean yourself up. You should be careful to do it before the middle of the day. Go to the mikvah, put on Shabbos clothes to show. And some people put on white garments. We don't do it. The custom is, is that we do Hatarat Nadarim. Erev Rosh Hashanah. And this is where we're going to stop. And God willing, we'll continue with this tomorrow. And we'll learn from here. This is right era of Rosh Hashanah. We do what's called Hatarat Nadarim, the uh, annulling of vows, which we'll do that tomorrow. And God willing, we'll continue on to the laws